I'm Dr. Laura Murillo, President and CEO of the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. We are thrilled to have Congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher joining us today to give us a recap of 2020. And we know it's been a doozy of a year and also to give us some hope for what is coming in 2021. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me, Dr. Murillo. It's great to see you. Absolutely. And we really appreciate you and your team for being so engaged with our chamber. We've had numerous conference calls with your team. You've always solicited feedback from our community, our members, and most especially those in business, oil and gas, which we know here in Houston are so very important. So thank you for that. Well, I'm glad to. That's what I'm here for. And I'm so glad to have a great partner in you and the chamber and look forward to all the work that we will do together in the years to come. Well, let's talk about this year, Congresswoman. What are some of the things that uh, you feel especially, you know, uh, happy about, proud of that you were able to accomplish this year? Well, you're right that this has been a doozy of a year and it's been such a challenge for people across our community. And I think, you know, what I feel best about for this year is really that we have been able to be a resource for people across the district and across our region and really working to help Houstonians. You know, on my team, we have closed more than 3,000 constituent cases where people needed help getting answers and solutions, things like um, loans through the PPP loan program, which of course we worked on in Congress, authorized uh, and provided additional funding for, but a lot of folks in the community needed help getting access to those loans. So helping folks uh, navigate that process, helping people get their um, economic uh, impact payments, um, helping people, unfortunately, who uh, needed the resources of the Texas Workforce Commission for unemployment, um, our team has been here for our district. And in this very uncertain year, I've just been so grateful to be able to be helpful and also to lead legislation uh, to help uh, address the problems that we see. The House has passed uh, several important bipartisan pieces of legislation to help during this incredibly difficult year. And I'm very proud to have been a part of that, to have led uh, in making sure that our small businesses were included and that they were getting to all of our small businesses, uh, making sure that we increase the kinds of lenders um, and the number of institutions that could participate so that we could help businesses and people throughout our community. And of course, the other thing, as you know, is uh, just being a resource for the community and holding town halls and community conversations on the things that matter to us, because of course, the challenges we faced before COVID-19 are still very much with us. So continuing work with the Army Corps of Engineers and working on flooding with Harris County flood control, working on costs of healthcare and prescription drug prices, um, being a, a resource and then bringing the information from our district to Washington uh, is a privilege and a real pleasure. And I have been so grateful to be able to do that this year. Yes, and an, an incredible and extraordinary year. I know for many of our small businesses and our community, folks are waiting to hear what Congress is going to do as it relates to the next stimulus package. I know you were out there today, you guys were voting and have a very busy agenda. What can you tell us about the possibilities there? Well, we are still working very hard. Um, I think there is a, a consensus in the Congress. And of course, I have been an advocate since day one that we needed additional um, we needed additional legislation after we passed the CARES Act. And of course, the CARES Act has been instrumental in helping our community and people across the country in this crisis, but we know that we need more. And so we are uh, working to provide additional, um, additional help for small businesses, especially, and for individuals. Uh, there's a lot of debate within the Congress, but I am very optimistic uh, that some of these key things will be able to fund at the end of the year. And of course, going into uh, next year with a new administration um, in the White House, I think we'll see a continued effort and emphasis on helping our communities make it through this difficult period, distribute the vaccine, get healthcare access to folks across our, our area and across the country. And then of course, building back. And one of the things I'm so proud to do is serve on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee where we put together a comprehensive infrastructure plan that'll help get people back to work, that will help rebuild our communities. And so I'm excited about the kinds of things we will be able to do thinking holistically about all of the ways we can help our community respond and, and thrive as soon as we get through this pandemic. But 
you know, what we've seen right now is that it takes all of us working together. And certainly Congress has an important role to play here in making that possible in providing funding and really in thinking about how we can work together going forward to make sure um, that we emerge from this very difficult period um, and, and do so working together. Well, and you've mentioned the word together several times. Let's talk about that as we enter 2021. What is your expectation as it relates to both sides of the aisle, better communicating to move the agenda forward and, and accepting that we must work together to get things done? There's been a lot of frustration by both Republicans and Democrats who feel like Things just haven't happened in a timely you know, way. And they, while are hopeful, they're concerned at the same time that we may just be getting the same of what we had in 2020. Well, I think that that is a, a really important question. And I am hopeful uh, that we will see a different approach uh, as we go into 2021 uh, with a few different players. But I think, you know, one thing that's important to know is that there actually is a lot of bipartisan work that goes on here in the Congress. And the bills I mentioned earlier, uh, they were all bipartisan bills that we passed through the House and the Senate uh, to address COVID relief. But we have more than 400 bipartisan bills, and that number has gone way up now. We've been passing several pieces of legislation uh, just here in this lame duck session. Um, I, of course, am delighted that um, my bill just passed the Senate to rename a post office in our district in honor of Deputy Sandy uh, Dollywall. And that was a bill that I introduced and I got everyone in the Texas delegation, Republican and Democrat on board. We got it passed in the House. It was just passed in the Senate. Um, and there are many uh, instances like that where we're working together to solve problems, to respond to issues in our communities. And there is a lot of bipartisan agreement. And so I wanna see that continue. I wanna see us build on that. Uh, I certainly am working on that. Um, just this week, I uh, introduced a letter for a bill um, and provisions that I've supported. And I got 180 Republicans and Democrats to sign on to this letter urging um, urging critical year in relief related to the PPP loans and tax deductions for businesses that have, have taken out those loans. So, you know, I see a lot of bipartisan agreement and what I hope is that we will see more of that because I am confident that we share so many values and there's so many things that we can do if we'll just work together. And I'm committed to doing that. And I know my colleagues here are enthusiastic about the work we can do in the year ahead. Well, we uh, thank you for that. And as a matter of fact, after this interview, we're interviewing your colleague, uh, Pete Olson, and I look forward to hearing about the work that he has been doing as well. And certainly given all of the many priorities and the, uh, you know, the access to capital for our businesses, uh, all of the turmoil that we're seeing in oil and gas, it is an opportunity for us to do as much as we can to keep our city strong vibrant and so many good things happening that i think sometimes we forget that as you very well mentioned there is a lot of collaboration but sometimes we only hear the negative part so thank you for sharing that with us and certainly always uh, welcome here at the houston hispanic chamber of commerce to keep us posted on what's going on in washington dc uh, one final comment from you and, and that's related to all of the things that we saw in terms of the increased number of voter turnout here in Houston and Harris County. Uh, what are your thoughts on that and, and how do we continue with this momentum moving forward? Well, I think that that increased turnout was a great sign because it means that people are engaged in the issues in our community and they wanna make their voices heard. And I think it's so, so important that we continue to encourage everyone to vote and to be engaged. Um, no matter who you're voting for, it's important that you make your voice heard. But I found as a member of Congress, the other thing is how important it is to send letters or emails or call your member of Congress and let them know what you're thinking about. For me, it is essential to shaping my agenda and setting my priorities to hear from my constituents. And I think the other thing that's so important is just to recognize that our government is really made up of people just like us. 
you know, I'm, I'm new to this job. I'm looking forward to starting my second term now. Um, but I just consider myself one of our neighbors who has the privilege to come to Washington and represent our community and to do it with other people from our community and our state. You know, Congressman Olson, who you just mentioned, is a great example. We've worked together since I got here. The very first bill I introduced called the HELP Act, uh, I introduced with Congressman Olson. We worked on it together to expedite disaster recovery projects after after natural disasters. And it's the kind of thing that we can do and we must do. Hearing from constituents at the ballot box and hearing from them um, in every possible way is absolutely essential. So I'm excited about the increased turnout. I hope we'll continue to see more because there is room to grow in Texas. And I'm so grateful for the chance to visit with you and share a little bit of what's happening here. And I hope that uh, folks know that I'm available, anyone who lives in my district, um, I hope they'll sign up to get the updates because I do think it's helpful to know what's going on here. And it's helpful for me to know what's happening at home, what the priorities are and how I can best solve the problems that the residents of Texas's seventh congressional district sent me here to solve. So I think it's a good sign that people are engaged and I'm really excited about what it means for the future of our community, for our state and for our country. Thank you so very much, Congresswoman. We appreciate you and happy holidays. We'll see you real soon. Thank you, Dr. Maria. Wonderful to see you. Happy holidays to you and to all of your members. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.